I had this idea for this psychological study of six men at sea, see what happens. Okay, action! And cut. You cut, thank you. Go to lunch. This is not a romantic movie. It's a movie that is about harsh survival. Shooting in the ocean is, is definitely um, high risk. Shooting in the open ocean is a world for high budget filmmaking. We knew we couldn't have all the technical wizardry. We had to go back to our film training and always look for almost the MacGyver approach to filmmaking. We had to build a lot of the equipment, one of which was a barge that's 25 by 25 feet. We couldn't escape each other. Most of the time we were doing a little ballet on this, you know, tiny little raft where if you had to move, someone had to step and then dance and get around the other person. It literally looks like penguins on a little ice floe. My key grip, Brian Adams and his brother, built us these rigs, all bungee corded in. It was convoluted, but it, it, I think it sort of worked, you know? I mean, as best as we could. Each day had its own surprises, the weather, Mother Nature. You know, you can only look at the Weather Network and Environment Canada so much before you realize that you're just at the mercy of the elements. We were rained on one night, 112 millimeters, and, and we've been in the cold and we've been in baked sun, and uh, we knew very early was that we had to surrender. And that's a complete contradiction for filmmaking. The sea controlled us. I mean, whatever the day brought, we had to deal with it, you know? Surely there'll be another sunny day again. There's a sequence that I had always seen to be shot in the sun, and we arrived and it was fog all day. We had to proceed and shoot it. Release the dory. Sounds good. Hit it. Hey, Mark. Uh, action. Action door. And we could hear the voices off, off and see nothing. I see him coming. It was the absolutely perfect element to shoot this scene in. 99 bottoms up here on the wall. 99 bottoms of beer. Take one down and pass it around. 98 bottles of beer on the wall. The cast was exceptional. They came into what I always advertised was going to be a grueling, you know, no frills, low budget experience that we were going to go out to see and see what happens. I feel, and I've been taught to feel, that uh, you should never take for granted being on the water. I have it constantly in the back of my mind that anything can happen at any time. The reason that this project is so relatable and so personal for so many people is that so many of us know someone who was lost at sea. I've seen a lot of, a lot of lives lost on the ocean. I've recovered a lot of people, um, you know, picked up fishermen off the bottom of the ocean and, you know, I mean, it's, it's the real thing, so. The somewhat unexpected thing, I guess, for me was to feel how alive this story is now. Uh, for communities like this, the lives of my characters are the lives of this town. If you start talking to people in Lunenburg, this story hits home to so many people. And I can't tell you how many people came to tell me about their father or their grandfather who, uh, who made that exact same run. Here and now. My work seems to, in the past, often give voice to other people's stories. And if that, this project does that, then that's a grand thing. It was just a good combined experience of people trying to make something with really not much. They poured their hearts into this project and um, they followed me to the end. I mean, there's nothing more rewarding when it, when it all comes together. They can look at it and say, aha. This is what we made, and uh, and be good with that. Here and now, as we are leaving. Here and now, we're not alone. Here and now, as stars are fading fast. 
find our way